Hey everybody, this video today is called What Does It Mean That The Thief Comes Only To Still Kill And Destroy? And we step into our second Topical Saturday for 2024, breaking out of our study through the book of Job, where we're going to be looking at the passage here in John chapter 10 that many of us know about. And many times when we hear John chapter 10 verse 10, we think of just Satan. But does this verse have a deeper meaning than Satan? Is that Jesus intent of speaking here in John chapter 10? Is it focused on Satan? So we're going to continue, or not continue, we're going to break out of Job, and we're going to continue with Topical Saturdays for this year on this topic. And I just want to mention, first off, I know today is Sunday, so don't think I'm losing it like the president. I'm just, uh, you know, yesterday was not still not a good day to still have a video. Um, as you probably saw, I had a stomach virus for the first time in a few years. And uh, that was that happened on Thursday. I mean, I was pretty much fine on Friday. But our household also has COVID in the household. So we're kind of just trying to play cautious uh, with COVID, even though I've had it in August and nobody else got it. So I'm just taking precautions with that. So with that being said, videos this week may be delayed or postponed again. I'll keep you in the loop. As of right now, I'm free and about. But just keep us in prayer and uh, all that. So no further holding back here. We're going to look at the verse that is our main focus. John 10.10, 10, it says, The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and destroy. I have come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. So in context of chapter 10 here, we see Jesus is presenting himself as the good shepherd. Jesus is telling the uh, Pharisees essentially that he is the Messiah with the way he is speaking to them here. He is the same Lord that David called my shepherd in Psalm 23, verse 1. And we'll go read that verse real quick. Psalm 23, 1, it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So before the discussion of shepherds and sheep, Jesus hailed a blind man in the previous chapter in John chapter 9. And we'll read a few verses over here in John chapter 9. I'm just going to flip over to it to get you the surrounding verses before we move into chapter 10 here. And the Pharisees, seeing him, refused to acknowledge Jesus as healer, even though Jesus healed the blind man. They mocked the blind man for trusting in Jesus. And right before chapter 10, in verse 39, Jesus said, For judgment I have come into this world, that those who do not see may see, and that those who see may be blind. So it's a little kind of strange words to the natural mind in verse 39. So Jesus, his purpose in verse 39 is to really push those buttons of the Pharisees. And, you know, 2020, the 21st century, I like to use the word triggered. He, he wanted to get them triggered. In uh, verse 40 through 41, I don't know why I wrote 42 here, says, then some of the Pharisees who were with him heard these words and said to him, Are we blind also? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not, you would have no sin. But now you say we see, therefore your sin remains. So they asked Jesus if they were blind. And Jesus said, If they were blind, they, would be, they wouldn't be guilty of sin. In John chapter 10, verse 1 and 2, it says, Most surely I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the, the, same, is a th uh, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters the door is the shepherd of the sheep. So Jesus tells them that anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, climbing in some other way, is called a thief and a robber. That is the one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. 
verse 3 through 5. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, and they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. So Jesus continued talking about the gatekeepers and how the shepherd calls out the sheep. And Jesus says that the sheep will only follow the shepherd whom they know. In verse 6 through 10, to our founding verse of today's topical, Jesus uses illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So Jesus tries to break it down Barney style to them. This is a term that we use a lot in the military. Jesus then interpreted his words. And with these words, Jesus is declaring that he is the only way to salvation and the fullness of life. And so you're probably asking, all right, you didn't get to the question where six and a half minutes in and you have a 10 minute time period on Topical Saturdays. No, we really don't. I try to keep it under 10 minutes. But who is the thief in, is our question. And what does that mean that he comes to steal, kill, and destroy only? And so when you look at the Greek word kleptes, it means one who steals. It's the same Greek word that Jesus used in the Sermon on the Mount Back in Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. So we'll go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. And verse 19 says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and stale, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, neither where moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and Steal. So anyone who claimed to be the way of salvation other than Jesus was robbing people of the truth. And so this is, you know, an area where John 10, 10, it doesn't mean Satan. I believe it means his minions, false teachers, for instance. They are those who bypass Jesus by bypassing the gate. And the Pharisees, put mandate requirements on people for salvation like the false teachers who steal people's ability to see the true mean of salvation. And false teachers, they result in death and destruction through their thievery. And the false teachers, they may claim to offer salvation, but they carry out Satan's intentions. And you know, that's that's where it goes with all the coats, people that had these visions and everything that broke off in the different religious groups like Mormonism and Jehovah Witnesses and all that stuff. And uh, John 8, 44. So John 8, 44 says, You are of your father the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. So rather than bring life, they bring death and destruction. And rather than give, they steal. That is how you can tell false teachers apart, is they, they may bring, you know, a fake hope. They might bring some encouraging words to you and get you all fluttered up and everything. But they bring death. They don't bring you to salvation. They don't preach Christ and Christ crucified alone. They don't pe they don't teach the, the person and works of Christ. And you know, they're on the, the, the take from the people. They're not on the give. When they don't support, you know, missionaries and have outside, you know, focus on reaching further out in God's kingdom, but you know, building their own mansions and air airplanes and all that. In uh, Galatians 1, verse 8 and 9, 
it says here, but if even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be accursed. So look at how the Apostle Paul tells the Galatians to deal with spiritual thieves. He says, let them be accursed. Let them have nothing to do with you. In uh, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1-3, through 3, and we're coming in for a landing. So I am over on my goal time on these topical Saturdays. It says, but there were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who brought them, and bring on themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their destructive ways, because of whom the way of the truth will be blasphemed. By covetedness they will exploit you with deceptive words. For a long time their judgment has not been idle, and their destruction does not slumber. So, I don't know if you've realized it by now, but we are not free from false teachers today. And do you know the truth? Do you know God's voice to know who are thieves today? Are you in God's word where you can take God's word and hold a pastor or anybody that you listen to accountable through those words as being based off biblical truth preached expositionally in context? So pray for God is my challenge to you today. Pray for God to give you the wisdom and discernment that you need to walk in your walk and be a barbarian as in Acts 17 verse 11 tells us that the uh, disciples were. And, you know, I challenge you to check out that verse on your own. But we'll see you this upcoming week, Lord willing, as we look at Elihu see, uh, seeing God in the storm. So... I, I we get to a very interesting closeout in the book of Job in these next few weeks, and uh, you know it, it, Job will make you feel better than a lot of the depressing stuff we've covered over the the course of the last few months. So uh, keep us in prayer, my family. Like I said, uh, we have three out of five with COVID right now. It's only the the men remaining. Um. Just keep us in prayer for that. Uh, keep me in prayer because even though I'm over the stomach bug, um, I don't know if everything inside inflamed. It's gotten better today. That's why you have a video today. But the last few days, it's been very sore getting up or taking deep breaths. So just keep me in prayer for that. Um, where it's getting better, I don't think I need to see the doctor or anything. But just keep us in prayer for that. And we'll see you this upcoming week, Lord willing in chapter 37. God bless.